Duvot are a Chinese company specializing in making robot arms, and now they've taken that expertise and applied it to their first handheld gimbal system, the Duvot Rajit. Handheld gimbals are no new technology, yet Dubot seem to have differentiated from the competition with some rather useful features. Features that take us back to the DJI Osmo Mobile in fact. Although you may well find DJI's version slightly cheaper, giving it the edge straight away. Nevertheless, the similarities don't end there. Inside the box we find a hard shell case, complete with shoulder strap and covered with a high quality finish, securely holding the gimbal unit itself. And upon initial inspection, the quality is actually really good. We have that typical three motor gimbal design at the top, attached to the hand grip below. Nothing out of the ordinary there, but I'm seriously impressed with the overall quality on display here. The hand grip is slim and more streamlined than the Osmo, with a rubberized section for added grippability, and an end cap that can be removed, revealing the unit's 3350 million battery, which Dubot claims should provide around 3 hours of constant use. Fortunately, it is removable, so you can always pick up spares if need be. The control module is nestled into a gloss finished base, making it look and feel more premium, and is comprised of a plastic joystick, which fluidly moves in all directions, and springs back to the center. It doesn't feel as nice as DJI's metal one, but is still comfortable to use without any problems. Under this is a single power and record button, with two plastic slider buttons on the right side. One to switch between different gimbal modes, and the second switching between shooting modes, which we'll take a look at shortly. On the opposite side we find a micro USB port for charging the gimbal's battery. I would have preferred a USB-C port for faster charging, although with no cover it's clear this isn't a splash proof unit either, so care needs to be taken when used around water, or in any wet environments for that matter. Nevertheless, further up are the three gimbal motors, stabilizing the tilt, roll and pan axis. Not only do they look super sleek with their matte black finish, they should also run quietly allowing for better audio capture, which we'll put to the test shortly. The lack of any external wires makes for a neat design, while a second USB port hidden beside the tilt motor can be used alongside the included cables to charge your connected smartphone while in use which is a nice little touch. Note that we do not have a full 360 degree turning circle with any of the motors, although with the size of smartphones nowadays it's not such a huge issue, but a point to note regardless. The smartphone clamp itself is rubber lined to grip as well as protect your inserted handset, and talking of grip, that's done with a rotating dial on the rear of the clamp, releasing and locking the clamping arms much more securely than the cheap spring loaded clamps of competing units. Balancing your attached handset is easily done thanks to the thumb screw, ensuring you can level the handset as much as possible in order to reduce any unnecessary stress on the motors while in use. With that said, a 2 second press of the power button instantly powers up and calibrates the gimbal, readying it for use and stabilizing your handset across all three axes, no problems there at all. The motors feel silky smooth and are practically silent in operation. From here it's a matter of switching between different shooting modes, which in turn unlocks and locks different axes depending upon your shooting style and the scenario itself. With other gimbals this has always been achieved with multiple button presses and different coloured LEDs. So having a physical switch to toggle between modes makes this so much more easier to use, as well as providing the ability to see which mode you're in at a glance. The joystick can be used to make fine tune adjustments or move the handset in different directions depending on the currently active mode. It is progressive too, so moving it a small amount makes it move the gimbal very slowly while taking it to its furthest travel makes the gimbal move quickly. Finally, a press of the same stick re-centers the handset instantly, all nice and comfortable during use. My main gripe with the device is that there's no easy way to mount it to anything else, such as your body, a helmet, or even a bike or a car. If you have some GoPro mounts and a tripod mount accessory, it is possible thanks to a tripod mount on the rear, although there's no other mounting options anywhere on the unit, so it really is designed around handheld use for the most part. In addition, when it comes to that single status LED, you have to use the manual, or remember the many flashing sequences to figure out what it's trying to tell you, or how much battery life is remaining. I would have preferred several LEDs indicating battery life instead, although these are very minor issues and probably just me being very picky. Otherwise, the unit itself works perfectly well. 
To get the most of the Rigit though, you'll want to install the accompanying app, available on both iOS and Android platforms. This connects via Bluetooth and opens up a range of new features, including the ability to start and stop capture using the unit's power button, making using the entire system even easier. Aside from plain photo and video modes, there are extras which make the gimbal a whole lot more useful. To select a shooting mode, you use the lower switch, which is sprung and returns to the middle. Pushing it upward switches between the front and rear phone cameras. Of the several modes available, we have Panorama, which moves the phone automatically to take a series of photos and then stitches them together. We also have other modes such as motion time-lapse and slow-mo, although the slow-mo mode isn't amazingly useful since you can shoot successful slow-mo videos handheld anyway. Nevertheless, one final trick is auto-tracking. This is exactly like DJI's Active Track. You draw a rectangle around your subject, and the gimbal will then turn to follow it as it moves. And as with DJI's version, it works rather well, until the subject moves too quickly and out of the frame. Overall though, the gimbal itself is pretty quiet in operation and works wonderfully well. The big question of course is how does it perform, and the short answer is very impressively. Like other handhold stabilizers, it can't do much about the up and down motion as you walk or run, you'd need a proper steadicam for that, but it still manages to iron out a lot of it to give decently smooth footage. Just as putting a top quality camera in the hands of an amateur doesn't mean they'll end up with top quality photos, it's the same with a gimbal. You'll have to put some time into practicing and thinking about how you want your shots to look in order to really get good footage. In the locked mode, for example, you can move slowly to emulate a slider shot, while the pan mode is good if you're walking around. No performance issues at all throughout testing. As it stands, for their first handheld gimbal system, Dubot have delivered a right little gem here. Yes, there are some minor annoyances, like the lack of flexibility when mounting, but it's designed to be a handheld unit first and foremost, and with that it excels. All modes work wonderfully well, and it's seriously hard to fault it in any way. It's up there competing directly with DJI's Osmo Mobile, and they're similarly priced too, which makes the decision even harder. But if you're after a handheld stabilization solution for your smartphone, this is definitely a unit you should consider.